look something like these two shapes that we have right here. So the shapes below are two examples of composite figures or composite shapes. What do they have in common? So I want you to look at those two shapes and think like, what do those two things have in common? And what I'm trying to get us to recognize here is they both are made up of more than one shape. So they're made up of more than one shape. In order to find the area of composite shapes, what we're going to do, let me see if I can. Okay, I was going to try to see if I can get it smaller. Um, is we are going to break your composite shape into shapes that we are familiar with getting the area of. So, for example, here we would break it up into a triangle and a rectangle because we know how to find the area of a rectangle and triangle. And then what we would do is we'd add them together. Same thing here. We break it up into a square and then to a trapezoid, which then we could break that trapezoid up into another square and triangles if we needed to in order to find the area of that shape. So what we do is we find the area of all the little pieces and then add them together. So once we have broken it into familiar shapes. So we place a number or label in each shape. This is going to keep our work nice and organized so that we know what we're doing and what work is for what. Then we're going to write down the formula. I know it's so hard to write inside that little space. Write down the formula area for that area of that particular shape. Then we substitute in the numbers for the base and the height. And we solve. Last but not least, we're going to write our answer with the correct label, which is going to be some sort of units squared. Okay, there's multiple different ways you can break shapes up, and no matter what, we should always get the same answer. For example, some people might say they want to break it up here. Some other people might say they want to break it up here. Either way, it does not matter. We should get the same answer. For the sake of this video, let's all just break it up here. That way your work matches mine. But if you already worked ahead for this problem, you're going to get the same answer as me as long as we're both doing it correctly. So here's where we're going to write like a number inside that shape. That's going to tell me that my first rectangle, I'm going to show that work right here. And I'm always going to start with the formula. So base times height, B times H. The base of that rectangle is not labeled, but the top is. And I know that the bottom and top of a rectangle are always the same. So I'd have six times. And then my height of that rectangle is 2. 6 times 2 is 12. I'm going to circle that answer to come back later so that I can add it up. Now I have my little square slash rectangle. I'm not sure what those dimensions are yet to say it's a square, but it looks like a square. So I've got shape number 2. I'm going to do base times height. The base of that square is 3. The height of that square we don't know. Now we know that this whole side is 5. Okay, we also know that for this rectangle, this piece right here in green is 2 because whatever's on the left side of the rectangle is the same as what's on the right. So if we know that this piece is 2 and the whole thing is 5, that blue piece is going to have to be 3 because 3 plus 2 is what would get us to equal that 5. So it is going to be a square. So we're going to do 3 times 3, which is 9. Last step, now that I found the area of each individual shape, I'm going to add them up. So 12 plus 9. 12 plus 9 is 21. Write my label, which will be feet squared. Circle that final answer so that we know which one is our actual answer in the end. Okay, let's do two more. If you're feeling confident, you can work ahead. That's okay. Um, if at any point you get stuck, you can just resume the video, but make sure that we're at least trying these on our own or just going along with the video and checking answers. So this shape is kind of tricky because it looks like it wants you to split it up halfway, but I don't want you to do that because if we were to split it up here, 
we'd have just one triangle. I should do that in a different color. One triangle and one rectangle. So now I only have to find the area of two shapes. Okay, let's start with the rectangle. Rectangle, I think, is always the easiest. So let's label this shape number one. Is a rectangle, so it's just base times height. The base of that rectangle is 26. What that 36 is talking about is from here to here, it's 36. So we can ignore the 36 for the triangle because we already have our base of our, or sorry, we can ignore the 36 for the rectangle because we already have our base of our rectangle right here. Then we have our height of our rectangle right here, which is 10. So 26 times 10. 26 times 10, well, our trick of multiplying by tens, we do 26 times 1, which is 26, and we just add our 0 on. So that rectangle is going to be 260. Now I have to do my triangle. Triangle is tricky because I don't have a base or a height given to me. Okay, I know that this little piece of my triangle, I'm going to do this in yellow, this little piece of my triangle is 5. Same with this little piece of my triangle is 5. Okay. This whole entire length right here, I'm going to do it in purple. This whole length is the base of the triangle. Remember, because we got to like turn our paper so that it looks like this. Okay, so we've got a little piece of five, a little piece of five. Now we need to figure out what's in the middle. Well, that's going to be part of the green rectangle. And this length of the green rectangle is the same as the length on the left side because it's a rectangle. So those are both going to be... 10. Okay, so now I've got 5, 5, and 10. And what I'm going to do is add all those together to get that total length here in purple. Okay, so 10 plus 5 plus 5 is going to be 20. So the base of this triangle, which is shape number 2, the base of this triangle, because we do base times height divided by 2, is going to be 20. Now my height. I'm going to erase out all that funky stuff I just did. That way it's not as confusing. So the height, I'm looking at this blue triangle right here, and I'm just looking for this height right here in yellow. All right, we said that the whole entire distance from end to end is 36. We know that the part that's the rectangle is 26. So we know from here to here is 26. The whole entire thing is 36. So we're asking ourselves, what does that leave for our height? Well, if the rectangle is 26 and the whole thing is 36, that leaves us 10 for the height. So our height of that triangle is 10. Then we'll have to divide that by 2. 20 times 10, again, we do 2 times 1 is 2. This time, instead of just adding 1 zero, we've got two zeros that we have to add in. So it would be 200. Then we have to divide it by 2 because it's a triangle. 200 divided by 2 is 100. Last step, since I want the area of this whole entire shape, I have to add in that triangle and that rectangle to get 360 units squared for that area. Okay. One more. All right, again, we're just going to try to cut it up into as least amount of shapes as possible, which would be cutting across here to make, again, I'm going to use colors, a rectangle and a triangle. So I'm always going to start with my rectangle because I think it's easy. So shape number one is going to be my rectangle. That's base times height. The base is not labeled, but we know that the height or the top is the same as the bottom. So 18 is our base. Our height is going straight up base to base times 20. Okay, we could use some mental math here and do 18 times 2, but if you're not sure what 18 times 2 is, you'll just pull it to the side and multiply it out. 18 times 2 is 36. Then we add in our 0 in that 20, so this is going to be 360. It's a rectangle, so we don't divide it by 2. We just leave it. I'm going to choose a different color because yellow is going to be hard to see. Then I've got my triangle. So shape number two is a triangle. I'll do base times height 
and then divide it by 2. My base of that triangle is not completely labeled. This little piece that's in blue is 8, but we need to know what the rest of this is. And what the rest of this is is the distance of the rectangle. Do we see that? So whatever's on top is also on bottom. So that means that this would also be 18. We'd have to add together 18 plus 8 to get that total length. 18 plus 8 is 26. So our base of that triangle is 26. Our height has to be the straight up and down distance. It's not labeled inside. I can see that it's labeled outside, which is okay. It's telling us the height of that triangle is 16 and then divided by 2. What I would do here, since we've got some really big numbers, is I would divide 16 by 2 first to get 8, and then multiply that by 26. I think that would be easier. You could have done 26 divided by 6, or times 16, and then divided it by 2 using long division. We'll still get the same answer. It's just, I think it's easier to multiply just two digits by one digit and not have to do any long division. Just my personal preference. So I'm going to stack 26 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 4, 20. So the area of this triangle is going to be 208. Last up, I want the area of the whole entire shape, so I have to add these two together. 360 plus 208. If I'm not sure what that is, I can just stack them. 0 plus 8, 8, 6 plus 0, 6, 5, sorry, 2 plus 3, 5, add in our label, meters squared, and then I want to really make it obvious that that is my final answer because we've got so much work going on here. Okay, so to find the area of a composite shape, we break it up into shapes that we already know how to find the area of rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids. Okay, and then we just add all those little shapes together to get the area of the whole entire shape. And that is going to be our lesson for today.